you to Animal Adventures. My name is Kylin and this is my special guest named Marvin. And Marvin is a bearded dragon. So this week I want to talk to you about how to be a wonderful pet owner for a pet bearded dragon. So we actually have five bearded dragons available for adoption in our shelter right now, and Marvin is the oldest of those bearded dragons. He's 10 years old, and the average lifespan of a bearded dragon in captivity is between 8 and 12 years, so he's doing really, really well. And Marvin is full grown, so he is what we consider a medium sized lizard and full grown beardies get between 12 and 24 inches long. So you can see his long tail kind of draped over my arm right there. And he's a really good size, not too small that he could wiggle away and be hard to find and not too enormous that he's going to need an entire bedroom in order to be happy and healthy. So they're called bearded dragons because you can see his big triangular shaped head has a bunch of spikes on the sides of it. And when he feels threatened or he becomes afraid, these spikes, he'll puff out his, um, his chin area and these spikes will become a little bit harder and pokier. But if I touch him right here along the sides of his body, these spikes are kind of soft and flexible. He doesn't have them really rigid and poking out at this time. And you'll see that he's trying to wiggle away and the appropriate way to hold a bearded dragon is on your chest or your arm like I'm trying to do right now. And that is so he feels really secure, like he has a tree branch underneath his body. When you go into his enclosure to pick him up, you wanna scoop him from the bottom. You don't wanna come from the top and grab him and clamp down from the top like a bird of prey. That might make him afraid. So bearded dragons in the wild are native to Australia. And Australia is of course really warm. So let's take a look inside of his enclosure and learn a little bit more about how we replicate the Australian environment to make sure that he's happy and comfortable inside of his enclosure. So most of you probably know that reptiles are ectothermic, which means that their body is only as warm as the air surrounding them. Some people call them cold-blooded, but I like to call them solar-powered instead. That means if they feel chilly, they need to go into the sunshine or lay on nice warm rocks to get warmed up. And if they feel too warm, they need to retreat into a shady area or even submerge themselves in their water bowl to cool down. So inside of his enclosure, one side is much warmer and that needs to be between 95 and even 110 degrees, which sounds really, really hot, but it must be that warm to keep his body comfortable and to make sure that he can properly digest his food. And on the other side of his enclosure, you can see this thermometer is between 80 and 85 degrees. So if he feels too warm, he can move to the cooler side. And if he feels too cool, he can move to the warmer side. You should never have an enclosure that's all the same temperature. The other thing you'll notice, and that's really important to provide your reptile, is UV lighting. And that's gonna replicate the sun inside of his enclosure. And that allows his bones to properly grow, which is so important. And the way that you provide the UV light is through these light bulbs. So when you purchase the UV lighting, make sure to read on the package when the UV runs out of the light bulb, because sometimes the light bulbs keep burning, but they're no longer emitting UV. dragons are omnivores. That means they eat insects and small animals as well as plants. So you have to be feeding them a little salad with every meal. And the salad should consist of leafy dark greens like dandelion greens or collard greens or parsley as well as brightly colored vegetables like a little red bell pepper. And you can feed them fruits as well but only about 10% of their diet should be made up of fruits. So use that kind of as a treat. Sometimes people will bring their bearded dragons into us and the bearded dragon is not accustomed to eating salads. They've only been eating insects their whole lives. And so we need to start tricking them into eating their greens and teaching them to eat salads. And the way we do that is maybe hiding a little mealworm in their salad so when they see it moving and go to eat it, they'll actually ingest a little bit of leafy greens as well. So really important from day one to always be introducing salads into their diet and trying to get them to eat quite a bit of leafy greens.
Substrate is what you're going to put on the floor of the enclosure, and a lot of people want to put sand, but sand can cause your beardy to become impacted or blocked up if they ingest it while eating or exploring their enclosure. So we recommend just paper or newspaper instead, which is really easy to clean, or if you don't like how paper looks, reptile carpet is a good option. Female bearded dragons will lay eggs even without a male present, so you'll need to provide her a sandbox in one corner of her enclosure, far away from her food, where she can lay and bury eggs in sand. Don't worry, the eggs won't won't hatch and when you find them during cleaning you can simply discard them. A lot of people think just like mammals, reptiles want a friend or a buddy to live with them to be happy. And in fact we discourage you from keeping two bearded dragons together because we find that one will be hoarding all of the resources, eating all of the food, taking up all of the best basking spaces, and it can be really, really stressful for them to live together. They also might fight at any time. So we just generally want you to avoid keeping two together in the same enclosure, and if you want to own two, just provide them with their own enclosures instead. Bearded dragons require a lot of research, before you adopt one so you can be a good caregiver and a good owner to them. A lot of people think that it might be an affordable pet to own, but they in fact cost a lot of money. You need to invest a lot of money in their enclosure, the appropriate enclosure you're going to keep them in, as well as the lighting and their diet and their vet care. adventures with me this week. I hope you enjoyed learning about Marvin and how you can be a good owner to a pet bearded dragon. I'll see everyone next week with a brand new episode.